In the beginning of learning to weld, there are several processes and equipment and supplies that you will need to get from your local welding company. And I suggest that wherever you're located, you contact them. Most of them are very helpful. They want to sell you the supplies that you're going to need. If you can tell them the kind of project you're doing, it makes it easier for them to tailor the equipment to you. Most of the tapes I've seen on YouTube do not talk about safety, whether you're electric or gas welding. This is very dangerous equipment and the temperatures reach 2,000 degrees in some cases. So you have to be properly dressed and you have to have fire extinguishers, sand and water. And I keep a burn kit handy. It's like an ice pack that you crush. And you can get all that at your welding supplier. And it's good to have it. Hopefully you won't need it, but it's always nice to have that there. These are some of the items that I've set up. These are typically used for electric welding. They're very heavy duty, and that's where you have a lot of uh, heat and light in electric. Uh, can actually burn your skin like a bad sunburn. So most of the welders that do that kind of work will typically get a welding helmet. This is for stick welding more than anything. Stick and arc. Now there's MIG and TIG welding, and I'll explain those later. But this is a self-darkening helmet. It protects your face and your skin from splatter and from the arc. The arc of most of these machines will actually burn your skin if you, if you get too close. So most welders buy these. Again, Harbor Freight Sears has these. They're very inexpensive, $49, $59, and you have to have one to do the stick welding. In arc welding and gas welding, this is the difference. It's a much smaller piece for gas welding. It protects your eyes, uh, but not your face. So if you're working under something, you would want to wear a helmet because things spit or fall and there's no telling where they're going to go. So I recommend you get both. Uh, if you wear glasses like I do, that is some protection, but you will need some tinted glasses to provide protection for brazing, which is what I primarily do. It's not like arc welding. It's, it's a more milder light that's produced, but it's not good for your eyes if you're not protected. These are sleeves, partial sleeves, which you slip on. They're leather. Almost all this stuff is made out of leather so that if it burns, you can smell it and it will protect your skin. In the beginning of welding, I suggest you wear these all the time and just get used to it. It's not always the most comfortable, but it, the idea is to protect you from the unknown when you do this. Things sometimes, imperfections in the metal, just pop. And it spits, pieces drop. Uh, when we first started, even though we had boots on, occasionally uh, molten steel will go down into your boot and you do the welder's jig which is uh, a no fun to do. So these are some of the products that are made today. This is a Kevlar coated glove and this is what's used by the Army in the bulletproof material. This will smoke when it gets hot and I like that because you know when you're touching something that you're not supposed to be doing. It warns you before it burns through. And it smells, which is again a good warning. When you have your helmet on, it's much harder to see these uh, different items. So the sleeves, different weight gloves, depending on what you're doing. I do a lot of sheet metal work, and sheet metal is like a razor blade. So I wear these gloves most of the time just to protect my hands from cuts. And uh, usually a welding coat like this, which is a fire rated coat, they're different levels. You can get all leather, which is probably better in the beginning when you first start because you don't know what's gonna happen. Later, you can go to a little lighter weight uh, items and it gives you a little more freedom with what you're doing. But the idea is to always be protected from the metal that you're working on. 
and be sure that your bench is stable, the material is clamped down, you're, you have some control of what's going on. And that's really the best way to get started. But you have to get the safety equipment before you start. It's really the most important thing. Then your welding experience will be enjoyable and you keep any kind of injury in any tool, any trade from happening.